grace and mercy yeah, all right. that brought us through all of our challenges in life. Yeah. Nothing but God's grace. Thank you. 
mercy, y'all. There's something about those twins. There's something about them. Travel back into the late 1800s. 326 Thompson Street, Cedartown, Georgia, is where Ida Bell and Henry Hutchins Sr. lived. In 1930, Henry Hutchins Jr. was born and raised by his mother and grandmother, who was respected and well known in the community as Miss Nora. Henry Hutchins' tall statue came from his grandmother. My grandfather attended Cedar Hill High School in Cedartown, Georgia, which was mainly all black and yes, he attended. Henry Hutchins was a star football player for the Cedar Hill Panthers. Other teams told them, 
If they win the game, they will lose the fight. But they won a lot of games and didn't lose every fight. Henry Hudgens graduated from Cedar Hill High School in May 1947. Henry Hudgens was determined to enter the military as soon as possible, so he got his high school football coach to change his date of birth so he would not need his parents' approval to enlist. In 1949, Henry Hudgens enlisted in the U.S. Army and later changed branches of service to the Air Force. In his years of service, Henry Hudgens was in the, Vim the Vietnam and Korean War and served 12 years overseas. He served on the, on the Human Relations Council and Non-Commissioned Officers Advisory Board. He was also awarded the Korean Service Medal, United Nations Service Medal, National Def Defense Service Medal, and Good Conduct Medal with a 21-piece piece ribbon bar. While in the Air Force, Henry Hudgens married the former Miss Daisy M. Hames and was ordained deacon in 1968. After, 20, after 23 years of service, Henry retired from the Air Force in 1971. As a tech sergeant in a time where he was told a black man would not be more than a sergeant in a white man's army. After retiring, Henry continued to serve in the church as a Sunday school teacher Sunday School Superintendent and Director of Christian Education. In 1974, he was licensed to preach and ordain a minister in 1977. Furthering his education, Minister Hudgens received, a, received his bachelor's degree from the Washington Bible College in 1981. He also studied Greek word construction in Fort Wayne Bible College Natural Science at Prince George College and completed the mid Amen. 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 College Silver Air Patrol Chaplains. In, 19, in April of 1979, the Mount Sinai Gospel Mission was organized in the home of Reverend Hutchins and service was held at Oak Crest Elementary School. In December of 79, after filing paperwork with the state of Maryland, the Mount Sinai Baptist Church was formed where he was founder and pastor for 31 years, producing eight other ministers. Mount Sinai was still moving strong since, since his pastoral retirement and, and has his name, Fellowship Hall, after him. In 1981, Pastor Hutchins received an honorary doctorate from the Wilbur Henry Water. Look. Wilbur Henry Watts School of Region in Washington, D.C. Dr. Hutchins served 18 years as a Civil War Patrol Chaplain, rising to senior wing chaplain with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Dr. Hutchins was known for many things, including I must increase while he increased. Stay focused in Psalms 119, verse 18. I open my eyes that I may see wonderful works from your law. In June 1983, Sean Hutchins was born, and the Hutchins legacy continues. Amen. Sounds like I heard that these two families were related somewhere along the line. A marriage happened. Well, in God's eyesight, we're all family. So I have learned a lot. Thank you. All right.
Not just some of my help. Not just a little bit of my help. But all of my help coming from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For caring so much about an old wretched soul like me. How wonderful thou art. How wonderful you are. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this Haynes family. Thank you for this Hutchins family. Thank you for the history that was shared this morning. Thank you, Lord, for black history, which is our history, which is important history. And I would have you to know that our history is yet and still under attack. It is a shame how fearful some people are of hearing the truth. Mm -hmm. That's what all of this foolishness is about. They don't want their kids to hear the truth. Haven't they heard <laughs> that the truth shall make you free? Thank you, Lord. For blessing us. Being here in this place. Stirring in our souls. I don't know if it's just me. But God is doing something wonderful in me. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. yes. God is doing something wonderful yes. in me. Yes. 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 He's moving on the inside and is working yes. on the outside. Yes. God is doing something yes. wonderful in me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, we are going to do what thus saith the Lord. Yes. Right. Yes. And praise the Lord. I am going to do it. Y'all know I'm not. I'm not really a singer, but God is doing something wonderful in me. Amen. Yes, God is doing something wonderful in me. Something awesome and incredible so that he may get the glory. God is doing something Minister, 
bring me in her absence and what a blessing it is to have our resident mother and teacher, Sister Ann Gibbons, in the house today. God bless the ministers of music who bless us and grace us Sunday in and Sunday out. And to all of you who are here with us physically and virtually, wherever and whenever you are, may God bless you on this morning. I don't know about you, but something about that song stirs my soul to think about the fact that there is a God. Amen. Who's big enough to have created all heaven and earth, but yet and still he's able to be on the inside of me. And because I know that God is on the inside of me, I know that my God is alive, he is well, and he is real. And he's moving on the inside. And it's because of him and his grace and his mercy and his truth that I get stirred up on the inside. And that is my assignment, pure point, to encourage others to believe in the truth, to witness that God is alive, that God is well, that God is real, and if you have the faith to believe him, he'll move on the inside of you and make something wonderful happen on the outside. My God is alive and real. He's awesome, yes sir, and he's incredible. And he does all of this, yes sir, so that he us already this morning. God has blessed us in prayer. God has blessed us in song. Amen. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm quick to say with Bishop Ivy, when he and I have an occasion to talk, uh, that God knows exactly what he is doing. All right. yes, and that is right. true. When you don't know what you're doing, yes, sir, right. God knows what he's yes, doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, yes. when you don't know what God is doing, uh -huh. that's right. God still knows what that's he's right. doing. That's yeah. right. God is in control yes. Yes, sir. at all times. Yes. Time. There has never been a situation where God was shocked by the hour. All right. Go ahead. Now, that's right. he knows that's what he's doing. Yeah. We thank God for the songs that we've heard this morning. Oh, give thanks yes, unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes, he is good. He yes. is worthy. Yes. He is worthy. Yes. He is worthy to be praised. Yes. Amen. Amen. By God's grace. Amen. Yes. Sister yes. Sylvia blessed yes. us with that song. Yes. We've made it this far. Yes. Yes. Don't think that you've made it to uh -huh. where you are yes. all by yourself. Yes. Yes. There's a God in heaven. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, there might have been hell going on in and around your life. Yes, sir. But still, God has been there. Yes, sir. Holding you and keeping you. Yes, sir. You think that sometimes things have been bad, but trust me, it could have been a whole lot worse. Yes, sir. There is a God in heaven. Yes, sir. Yet and still loves you. Yes. Amen. 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 And God, amen. We, we The last song, uh, your grace and mercy. Your grace yes. and mercy. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. I could. I was back in the office, and I was witnessing what was going on when the praise team was, was, was singing, giving God the praise and glory, but then something moved on Brother Darwin's heart. Right. And he took it over and upon himself to tell God through song, right. Lord, your grace yes. and your mercy yes, sir. brought me through. Yes, sir. I'm living this moment. Yes, sir. Because of you, yes. God is awesome. Yes, sir. God is awesome. Amen. Yes, sir. Um, I thank God again for being who he is yes, in my life. Yes, I truly do. I know that God has his hand on my life. Yes, sir. Right. I'm going to say this. You know, I just got to let God have his way. Hey, come on now. Not everything is going great uh -huh. in my life. All right, All right. go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm dealing with some hell going on all around. All around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But through it all, I know that God yes. is worthy yes. to be praised. Yes. I have learned through the years of my life that I should trust in the Lord with all of my heart yes. and lean not unto my own understanding. Yes. A lot of us run into trouble and cause 
problems on top of problems because we're trying to figure it out right. ourselves right. when God is saying, look, trust me with all your heart. Right. Yes, I know things don't seem right right now. Uh -huh. They don't look right right now. But I got you yes, if you believe. Amen. God has got you. God has got you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do, and, and this is just God doing what he does in his way. God's not always moving exactly the way we expect him to move. God is not about tradition. So I, just doing things a little bit different this morning, I'm first going to give a number of scriptures because at the end of the day, God wants to receive all the glory. Right. It is not about me. That's right. It is all about him. That's right. And I have to share with you that you will never, ever in your lifetime, there will never be a time in your life where you hear a sermon that is more anointed than the scripture from which it is birthed. Right. I'm going to say that again. You will never, ever, ever in your lifetime hear a sermon <laughs> delivered by any great uh, preacher, teacher, uh, anyone that is more anointed. There will never be a sermon heard that is more anointed than the scripture from which it is based. What, right. What's the point of all of that? Read your Bible. Mm -hmm. All right. Cut, cut it straight to the chest. You got to read the Bible for yourself. That's right. That's right. Because the Bible is indeed the anointed word of God. God is real. God is real. And if you trust him and believe him, he'll be real in your soul. Amen. So again, we're going to start off with given, uh, again, multiple scriptures. Now, I'm going to do my assignment. I'm going to do my part. My part is to just share with you these scriptures, encourage you to read it, but now it's up to you to do it. Now, I say it because I'm going to keep it real. We know that there are a whole lot of people who play church. Uh -huh. right, right. Mm -hmm. right. They come Sunday in and Sunday out. Right. Amen. They might shout. They might lift holy hands, yeah. but then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, God is, he, he, he's like, where are you? Uh -huh. You were doing all that shouting and praising me on Sunday, or at least you claimed that you were praising me on Sunday. But here it is, Tuesday, I've been trying to get a word to you, and I know you're not listening. Mm -hmm. So here's my assignment, the scripture. First scripture that uh, God would have me share with you is Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 17. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 17. And you don't have to stand at this point because, again, I'm just giving out the scriptures, multiple scriptures, because, again, the... the the point for this is for you to make note of it, amen, and then throughout the course of this week, the next month, what have you, spend time in these verses of scripture because I declare, I know, God's trying to tell you something. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you're paying attention to what's going on in this world today, if God is trying to tell you something, you ought to want to hear it. All right. mm -hmm. yeah. The next uh, passage of scripture is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 to verse 34. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The next is the gospel according to John chapter 4, verses 22 to 26. Again, that's John chapter 4, verses 22 to 26. The next is Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. The 
Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. Then next we have John, chapter 14, verses 25 and 26. John, chapter 14, verses 25 and 26. And then we got two more. The next one is uh, 1 John, chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. And then last we have Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Now, I'm, I share with you guys that I'm just doing what God would have me to do. He would have me to do. For some reason, God put it on my heart to share with you those seven. And I think that it's by God's design that there were seven passages of scripture that he would have me share with you this morning. He told me my responsibility is to not make anybody, is not to force anyone uh, to read it, but this has been shared with you. It's up to you as to whether or not you believe that God is really trying to get something to you or not. Right? But I'm doing my part. The next thing that God would have me to do, again, not conventional, but I'm going to share four key points that God wants you to know. Amen? So as we go through the sermon, there are these four points that God wants you to have stirring in your heart, in your head, and in your ears. First one is God wants you to seek the sign. God wants you to seek the signs. The next point is God wants you to rightly read the signs. God wants you to rightly read the signs. The third point is God himself will teach you how to read. God himself will teach you how to read. And then the fourth point, the last point, is that God wants you to know the sign. Uh, now at this point, we'll go to our key verse of Scripture, which is the first one that we share, Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 13. And we'll read through verse 17. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 13 and reading to verse 17. When you get there, let me know by saying amen. 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 And it reads on this wise. It says, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesar Caesar Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. You all may be seated. Amen. 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 If I had to have a subject for the message this morning, it would be this. Just to know him. All right. Mm -hmm. Just to know him. Now, I received the seed of this sermon a couple of Sundays ago. On Sunday, January the 29th, to be precise. It was on the day that we were celebrating and observing you Sunday here at True Believers Church. Amen. 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 What a blessed day that was. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. We got off to a great start. Yeah. Little Lulu opened the service with a beautiful prayer. Amen. Then First Lady Ivy stirred up the spirit, singing, oh, I want to see him. I want to look upon his face, yes, sir. there to sing forever yes, sir. of his saving grace. Yes, sir. On the streets of glory, yes, sir. let me lift my voice, yes. care the past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Amen, amen, amen. 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 That song is an anointed song. Indeed, that right. song yes. is filled with gospel truth. Amen. Then afterwards, we heard Minister Monroe. He delivered an encouraging message from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16 and verse 13. Uh, this, the, the scripture was simply this. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, and be strong. And the subject of his sermon was this. Stand right, stand strong, and stand tall. Indeed. Now that word, that message... Amen, was a message that was intended mm -hmm. to encourage our young people. Mm -hmm. yes. amen. amen. But I don't care who you are, if you're truly in Christ, yes. Yes. amen, then you're amen. a young person. Yes. Amen. amen. There's amen. a youth yes. within you. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that word, that message was for you as well. It doesn't matter what your physical age was. All right. If yes. you are truly a child of God, yes, sir. if you are truly a child of the Most High, then that message was intended for you also. Amen? Amen? But I have to share with you that there was a particular song that the young people sang. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I declare that it was a true gospel song. All right. yes. I felt that song yes, deep down in my yes, spirit yes, and in my soul. All right. Amen. And I say true gospel mm -hmm. because how many of you know that Everything that's considered gospel today, everything that's considered the gospel song today, it ain't really the gospel. Amen. It might hype you up. Might sound good. Might have a catchy hook. But that doesn't make it a gospel song. Amen. See, some of us, we get so caught up in the music and the melody that we don't pay attention to the message. And it's the message that's truly most important. And when we look at our scripture this morning, we find that Jesus was asking two questions. The first question was this. Who do men, other people, yes. say that I am? Yes. It's an important question. All right. But it's not the most important question. All right. The most important question was that second question that Jesus asked of his disciples. Who do you say that I am? All right. mm -hmm. Who do you say that I am? Yes, now, indeed, by the grace of God, amen, we have his holy scripture that opens up to us a vision of what was going on some 2,000 plus years ago. Yes, right. Right. Yes. But how many of you know that the word that God was sharing back then was not meant simply and solely for them, right. but God 2,000 years ago yes, was yes. speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. God 2,000 yes. plus years ago yes, was trying to get a message across to Sister Sylvia, yes. Janelle, Darvel, uh, Kyle, everyone. Yes. God is always trying to talk to you. Right. Right. Uh -huh. right. yes. And God's always trying to share signs with us All so right. that we might know that he is real. All right. mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. The Bible tells us, and the Bible does not lie, that God is invisible. Hey. But God wants you to see the invisible. All right. yes, and if you have faith and you trust him, God will allow you to see things that other people cannot yes, see. Yes, because God is Real. Yes, it is. In, now, yes, it is. yes, we, you know, we, 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 we have as our key verse of scripture, uh, verse 13, Matthew 16, 13 through 17. But up at the start of the chapter, we find uh, that, that Jesus had been approached by Pharisees and Sadducees. Yes. In fact, 
the scriptures tell us that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, they came and they were tempting Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, it reads on this wise, it says, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Yes. And he answered and said unto them, when it's evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and, and lowering. And then Jesus said this, O ye hypocrites. Uh-huh, you can discern the face of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the time. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it. But the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. Now, what's the point of that? Jesus does say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Yes, all right. Sir. But if you pay attention, the Bible tells us that the Pharisees and the uh, Sadducees, although they came to Jesus, they didn't come the right way. All right. All right. They came yes. tempting him. They came trying to catch him in something. Mm. If you know... I'll, I'll say this. When you're, when you're reading the Bible, when you're reading the scripture, it is important to pay attention to who all is present, to who is there, to who's saying what, and why they're asking or saying what they're saying. So we had the Pharisees and the Sadducees approaching Jesus, but again, they didn't come in the right spirit. They came trying to catch him in a trap. Why? Because they were the religious leaders of that time. And they saw Jesus as a threat. He was a threat to their power, to their prestige, and probably to their pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came to give the truth, right? Yes. When you pay attention to the scriptures, you will find that Jesus never, ever approached anyone to just go at them. But when people came to Jesus the wrong way, he set the record straight, but then went about his business, which was what? To preach the gospel to those who would have ears to hear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, so the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, they were trying to tempt Jesus. They were trying to set him up in a trap. And here, here's the thing that, that I would have you to know. That if, or, or the, they were trying to say that, Jesus, if you are so in touch with God, prove it. Right. Now, right. here's a, 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 something that we should all know. If you have a right relationship with God, and you know that your relationship with God is real and true, you don't have to prove it to anybody. Amen. All right. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. there you go. If you know right. you go. that you are in tune mm -hmm. with your Father yes. who is in heaven, All right. yes, you don't have to prove it to no. anybody. All right. Now, some folks will look at your strengths, mm -hmm. may even talk about you. That's right. But here's the thing. If you know that you know the Lord yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Our God. and he what? He knows your name. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Let the haters hate. All right. All right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Look, and, and, and here's something else that's true. Like it, we, we live in a time now where everybody's saying something about everybody. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you'll find yourself Fooling around, getting sucked okay. All right. <laughs> into some foolishness. All right. yes, sir. Yes. Trying to defend yourself. That's but right. if you know that you are in right standing yes. with God, yes, sir. Right. let them say what they want to say. Yes. Yes. Let them think what they want to think. Yes. Yes. It does not matter. What is most important is making sure 
that you are in right standing with God. Uh huh. See, now here, here's the truth about what was happening some 2,000 and plus years ago, but then what still happens today. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, again, were what? Religious leaders. Yes, sir. They were religious leaders, right? They, 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 they walked around wearing garments mm -hmm. to show themselves mm -hmm. as having a right relationship with All God. Right. In other words, they were trying to show themselves as being righteous. But here's the truth of the matter. They were self-righteous. All right, then. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. There is a difference between someone who is self-righteous mm -hmm. and someone who is truly righteous. All right. mm -hmm. True righteousness <laughs> comes from the Lord. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. You can't declare yourself righteous and truly be righteous. God sees you for who you are. What did he say to him? You hypocrites. Yeah. Someone on the outside who's just religious but not truly interested in having the personal relationship with God might have thought, oh, look at them. They're going to Jesus. They're okay. That's all. Look at what they're wearing. You know, they look holy. All right. They look the part. All right. They look like this, and they look like they carry themselves yes. all dignified. Uh -huh. Sometimes, look, when it comes to God, look, I, I have no shame. There have been times where I've been going through things in my life, and I found myself struggling and crying out to God. And I, when I say crying, I'm talking about truly crying, yes, tears sir. coming down my face. Yes, and I ain't ashamed to say sometimes I start crying so much that I got a little snot in my <laughs> But guess what? God didn't worry about that. Uh -huh. He wasn't concerned about that. Amen. God knows where you're coming from. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God knows what you're going through. Amen. Amen. And what's more important to God beyond what you look like uh-huh, is what's going on in your heart. Amen. God knows when you're speaking to him in truth. All right. And God knows when you're coming to him with some foolishness. Yes, All right. Sir. And there is a difference. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right. And, and, and it, here's another truth. Just keeping it real, straight 100, as Pastor Ivan would say. <laughs> Sometimes we can get caught up in our own foolishness. Mm -hmm. And we, too, can find ourselves guilty of approaching God the wrong way. Right. We too can find ourselves guilty of approaching Jesus with the wrong motives. All right. Our All right. aims are not pure. All right? All right. See, and here's the truth of the matter. God's not going to answer your foolish prayer. All right. Yes, All right. he wants to All hear right. from you. Yes, sir. He wants you yes. to pray. Yes. Amen. He wants you to call on his name. Yes, sir. But he don't want you coming with foolishness. All right. And here's the thing. If you're struggling, because here it is. So like, we, we got to be real about this thing. Yes. If you are at a point in your life where you're struggling to understand the difference, Lord, am I being selfish in this prayer? Mm. Right. Or is this truly something that, that you desire mm -hmm. of me or from me? Mm. Talk to him. He'll let you know. Mm. Talk to him. God is the, like, he, he is the best friend mm -hmm. that you can ever have. Mm -hmm. yes. He's a yes. brother. Yes, sir. He's willing to hear from That's you. Right. Look, when you're in pain, mm -hmm. oh, my God. he's willing to hear you, yes. like, hash it out. All right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like, don't get it twisted. There have been times where I have just vented to God. And I think, yeah. I, like, like I, I stand here uh, before you all, and I let you know that I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed. Mm -hmm. I'm richly blessed. Mm -hmm. God has blessed me with a beautiful wife Amen. and 11 families. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. Beautiful wife and 11 families. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, sometimes, like back in the day, <laughs> early days, <laughs> when, when, when True Love and I were going through our process of growing and understanding and trying to figure this thing out, because here it is, marriage ain't easy. Mm -hmm. Especially in them early days. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that God is merciful. Yes. Amen. God is kind. Yes. I know him yes. to be filled with grace. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. There have been times where I know 
that the things that I did and the things that I said were not right to God. All right. Yes. Sir. All right. Yes. But He didn't slay me down. All right. All right. Now. I might have bumped my head right. for some foolishness that I did. All right. But He was still loving. Merciful and kind. Yes. Yes. Look, here's the truth of the matter. God understands and knows that not one of us here is perfect. Amen. All right. Amen. Not one of us here. Amen. Not one of us here. Amen. Not one of us here. Now, some of you, like, you can try to look like it, right? <laughs> but you ain't fooling God. Amen. Uh, and this is why all of us are deserving of grace. Right. Now, now, I'm going to say, God extends grace yes. to yes. all of us. Yes. But the question now is, what about you? All right. Do you extend grace mm -hmm. to others who perhaps have missed the mark right. in something that you thought yes. they should have got right and they should have got it right the first time? Right. Mm -hmm. The truth is that we like we are to learn how to live this life <coughs> through him yes. in him yes. with him right y'all hear what I'm saying All right. God loves you Amen. now I was saying again that God wants you to see the signs God wants you to know the signs. Again, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came and they, they, they asked Jesus to show mm -hmm. us the sign. Yes. And it's not that God was not intending to show them the sign, but God knew that they were being hypocrites. Their motives were not pure. All right. and God was saying that when it comes to some, some stuff in the earth, you know, y'all can read the sign. Y'all can talk about, oh, yeah, the, the weather is fair today. All right. Not because you just knew it, but you looked right. at the sign. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But now here's the truth. He was saying that when it comes to what's truly important, yes, sir. right? Yes. Sir. The spiritual matters, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Y'all are not really interested in those. Mm -hmm. But later on, he went and told his disciples about the sign. He said when 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 he, he goes on and he talks about um, when he says bless me Lord. Give me one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah when when he calls them uh, hypocrites and he says there shall be no sign given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas he's saying that in the old testament book Jonah, when uh, Jonah was swallowed in the belly of the fish and then he came out, he's saying that that's a sign. Yes. Right? right. Yeah. That, that was a sign. Here, like, here, here's something that you, you, you should, we should all know. That there is not one passage of scripture in the Bible that is not speaking to the truth of Jesus Christ. All of it is pointed to Jesus. Yes. Right? Yes, so the, the, that, that story, that truth that happened with, with, with Jonah, and, and uh, Jonah had the, the attitude with the nymph, because God was telling him to go uh, deliver yes. the words to the nymph, and he didn't want to do it, and yes. he got swallowed up by the by the uh, the, the, fit, the well and, mm -hmm. and then he spewed him out three days yes, sir. that was alluding to what was to come yes. with the Messiah mm -hmm. right Jesus to Christ so that that's a sign and again I say God's always given us signs yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 to 34 it's it's a prophecy of the Messiah. It, and I'll just read it quickly. It says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, 
but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now hear this. He says, after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. God is doing something wonderful in me. I will put my law in their inward parts and I will write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, now here's, here's the key. Again, I'm telling you that God wants you to seek the sign. God wants you to re read the sign. And God wants you to rightly read the sign. And he's, he's there to help. He says in verse 34, And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Now hear this. He says, For they shall all know me from the least of them, Unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, some thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, using his anointed prophet Jeremiah, was preparing us for the truth that was to come. Amen? Amen. The Messiah. So if we now go to... Uh, the New Testament, uh -huh. we find that we, we, we're accustomed or familiar with the story where Jesus met the woman at the well and told her about herself, yeah. right? Now, he told her about herself, but he didn't go at her, right? All right. Yeah. All right. He, he, All right. he just, you know, had a conversation with her. Uh -huh. All right. Now, some religious yeah. folk at that time, you know, mm -hmm. Beating up on it, yeah. Yes. That 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 sinful woman, right? right. They would have brought rocks and all kind of foolishness. Right. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> but but this our God loves us so much. Yes. Again, he is full of grace yes. and mercy. Now y'all don't let yes. the devil distract you with this. Let, 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 right. let him be. Yes. Let him be. Yes. God knows what he's doing. Yes. It's our responsibility to seek to hear. From heaven, amen? amen. So don't get distracted. That's one of the. Right. That is right. one of the the, the, uh, right. the right. This is one yes. of the devices the okay. Bible says right. of the devil, right? right. Yes. It's yes. something where he's trying to get you distracted yes. from what's most important. All right. Stay focused. Amen. Stay focused. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So so uh, in John chapter four, in verse twenty five, the scripture says that the woman saith unto him. I know that the Messiah coming, which is called Christ, when he is come, hear this, he will tell us all things. He will tell us all things. The Messiah, the promised one from God the Father in heaven, he promised a sign that would tell us all things. If we look closer, uh, up at verse 24, Jesus is speaking to the woman at the well, mm -hmm. and, and he says, you worship, ye you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the yes. Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes. For Hear this, for the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. And then again, the woman said uh, unto him, I know the Messiah comes, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And here, here it is. In verse 26, Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Amen. God's giving you a sign. Yes. God's giving you a sign. In the Old Testament, God said what he was going to do. And then here in the New Testament, God is in essence confirming what he has done. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, again, I say that God is always, always trying to speak to us through signs. God is always trying to get us to hear from him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From him, right? Yes. Because God wants to have a deeply personal relationship with you. Amen. God wants to talk to you about things 
that you don't feel comfortable talking with anybody else about. God wants to hear you talk to him about your problem because he has the answer. Now, again, all of this today, I know all of this today that, that what God has just put on the inside of me to share with everyone today is that he wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. So uh, now another uh, passage of scripture that, that we shared earlier is from Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 through 5. I'm going to go ahead and read it and then hit on what I know God wants you to hear this morning. It says uh, at verse 1, and after six days, Jesus took, he takes Peter, James, and John, his brother, and he brings them up into a high mountain apart, and he was transfigured before him, before them. That means that transfigured means that he changed. He changed. His body, his physical uh, uh, presence actually changed. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias. They were talking with him, Jesus. Then answered Peter and said unto him, unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Here's the, I want you to hear this. Hear this. Verse 5. While he yet spake, while Peter was saying this, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which says, This is my beloved son, and here it is, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So here's God the Father giving a sign yes. and making it plain. I want you, Peter, don't be twisted. Don't get it twisted. Right. Yes, I've allowed you to witness and see here on this mountain yes. Jesus having conversation with Elias and Moses. With Moses and Elias, but they were talking to him. They were talking to Jesus. Now, Peter being a disciple, and, 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 and here it is, as disciples, we're all going through a process of learning. I don't care how long, yes. how long yes. you've been uh, in relationship with God. I don't care how long you've been following Jesus. I don't care how long you've been in the ministry. There's still something more for you to learn. Mm -hmm. So Peter had been spending all of this time with Jesus, but yet and still, he didn't fully understand everything that he had been witnessing, right? So here it is, he is witnessing this miracle where he's on the mountain of, of transfiguration. He sees Jesus, Moses, and Elias, but he got it wrong because when he said, let us uh, build three tabernacles, that's where he went, that's where he he went left. He, he went to the left. And God stepped in right there and said, no, Peter, <laughs> this one, you need to get it right. He said, him, Jesus, is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he's the one you should hear. Now, what's so significant about that? You had Moses there. Mm -hmm. Moses, the Old Testament law. Mm -hmm. You had Elias there. Mm -hmm. He's representative of the prophets, oh, right? Yes. So that's all of the Old Testament represented right there. You got right. the, uh, the law, Moses. Yes. You got the prophets. And while they are important, and while the Old Testament is significant and important for us to read, God the Father says, do not get it twisted. The one that you need to hear is Jesus the Christ, All right. the son of the living God. He's the one. All right. God is making it plain yes, sir. how often we have breezed over 
this passage of scripture, right. not fully appreciate the sign that God has given us. But I declare unto you this morning that there is no scripture found that does not serve the purpose of pointing us to Jesus the Christ. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, Amen. Amen. Y'all, y'all bear with me. I, I get excited. I get excited when I know that God is getting a message to me. Now, don't get it wrong. As there was a role and a purpose for Moses and Elias, Moses, the law, and the prophets, there's a purpose for the, the prophets, the preachers, the teachers, the evangelists, uh, the apostles, and all for today. But do not for one minute, not for one second, deceive yourself. Jesus is the one, the one that you need to hear. All right. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Like right yes. now, I, I, like don't, yes. I don't get it twisted at all. Yes. I take no glory from God. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It has never been about me, and it never will be about me. It is always about Jesus. I'm just here to fulfill my earthly assignment, which is to encourage others to meet that man. All right. All right. Because All right. that man yes. can do some things yes. that no other man yes. can do. Yes. Yeah, we can hear a good sermon preach and get excited yes. and stir it up. But again, if you have not heard the voice yes. of Jesus All for right. yourself, yes. you're missing the point. All right. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So we're going <clears throat> we're gonna, to we're gonna bring this thing uh, to a close where again we know that Jesus asked two questions both important who do men say that I am but the last one is the most important who do you say that I am he wants to give you the right answer to that question and that's why he's taking it upon himself to teach you. Amen? Yes. Amen. No, you, you know what? Let me go. I, I've got to do this. Y'all just going to have to bear with me uh, for, for one moment because there's something else that I think is extremely, extremely uh, important and will be helpful uh, to you in your... Uh, I'm, I'm just proclaiming it right now. Every person here is truly going to seek God. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Every, I'm talking about God or yourself. I'm talking about the true living God. That's mm right. -hmm. Now, they, like, we all are on a Christian journey, but our journey is our journey ourselves. Right? All I'm doing right now, the only thing that I can do is share. And encourage others to seek God for themselves. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes. But I take, I, there's no way. I, like, there is one who rightly said, I am the way, the mm -hmm. truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No man comes to the Father right. but by me. And if you don't know, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now the answer. The answer is Jesus. Jesus is the only one right. who has ever been able to say, truly and righteously that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Everybody else, if they're not pointing you to Jesus, then you need not listen to them at all. Because they are leading you to a path of destruction. If you are true and you really want to know God for yourself, you've got to go to that man Jesus. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Now, again, Jesus being who he is, right? God the Son loves each and every one of us. And here, here's also like just something that's so awesome and wonderful about the scriptures. It tells us that God created the heaven and the earth 
and that God through Moses and his prophets was speaking to his people and then uh, it is so awesome to me to know that the God who created heaven and the earth did in physical form like you and I walk on the face of the earth it happened one time one time where God walked on the face of the earth and that was when he was born of that virgin Mary wrapped in swaddling clothes Jesus was God himself walking on the face of the earth and so Jesus had been talking uh, to the disciples and preparing them for what was about to come we've had God the Father speak to make it known that hey it's Jesus he's the one that you need to listen to now Jesus knew that his assignment was not to be on the face of the earth in physical manifestation forever he come he fulfilled his earthly mission and and he knew that he had to go face that cross he had work to do he had work to do. oh to know him I'm telling you just to know him because when he went to that cross, he had me in mind. All right. I can I can only speak All right. for myself. All right. I can only, but I know, yes. I know that yes. he knew yes. that there would be a, 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 a little kid from Rockmar, Georgia. All right. All right. Uh huh. Robert Todd James. Okay. He had my name hey. All right. in his heart. All right. All right. When he not look. It wasn't that he just went to the cross and they eased him on up there. Right. No, he suffered before. Mm. They, he su do do y'all think about that? Like, do you really think about that? Have, like, <laughs> have, have you ever, like, got, like, a splinter in your finger? Mm -hmm. And how that hurts? Uh -huh. Now, can you imagine what it was like for Jesus when uh, he was first beat? And, and, and they had the cat of nine tails, which had like chains and claws. And, and they whipped him with it. And so when it hit his back, it wasn't that it just hit and bounced off. But the claws actually dug into his skin. And then when they pulled it out, chunks of skin come, come out. I mean, and all the while, Jesus had me on his mind. All right. All right. I don't take that life. Right. Yeah. I don't take that for granted. Because I know, like, like if it, if, I mean, think about it, really. If it if it were up to you, right, and everybody else was it, Lord, don't stop hitting me. Right? I can't take it. I can't take it. Right? But no, he said, I'm going to keep on. I got work to do. Yes, I got some folks <laughs> that I love. Yes, sir. Come on now. And, and, and truth be known, he would say, this is a sign. Mm. This is a sign. I'm trying to let you know Amen. how much I love you. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. How much I love yes. you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So in, in uh, I, I'm, I'm going to get to this point in John chapter 14 and verse 25 this is Jesus he is speaking to his disciples and I'm going to encourage you I know I've given you like seven passages of scripture but whenever you're going through a struggle in your life a real hard time I encourage you to go to the Gospel of John, chapters 14 through 17. In those chapters, Jesus was preparing his disciples for what he was about to endure. But, but get this. He knew what he was about to face. But instead of focusing on himself, he was thinking about, okay, I'm about to go through my, my being, uh, you know, the stripes so that they may be healed, and then I'm going to be hung on the old rugged cross. I'm going to literally die. 
I'm giving up the ghost. But but he's saying, later for that, I'm not worried about that because they're going to have a difficult time seeing what I'm going through. Now think about that. He's about to really go through it, but he's concerned about them having a hard time watching him go through what he's about to go through mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Again, if you don't know that God loves you, right. you're missing a sign. Right. Right. You're missing a sign. Yes. Start paying yes, attention sir. to the sign. Yes. Amen? It's, yes. So in, in John chapter 14 at verse 25 and 26, mm -hmm. Jesus said, to his disciples, these things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Again, it just blows my mind to think about the fact that the real God who created heaven and earth was a physical man for a period of time, walking on the face of the earth, and he was touched and held, uh, all because he wants us to know, right? And in verse 26 it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, right? He shall teach you all things yes, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So again, this is what, like, here it is. We have in that verse of Scripture where it's God the Father. Jesus said he's going to send you the Comforter, who is who? The Holy Spirit in my name. So there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. all in that one verse of scripture, mm -hmm. and the ultimate purpose is to serve as a witness that we might know who is the true and living God, that we might be able to stand on what we believe yes. and know, stand on our faith. Amen? Amen. 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 So <laughs> again, we have God the Father, who down through the ages has been trying to get a word, a message across to each and every one of us. All of the scriptures, the, the, the purpose of the scriptures is for you to be saved so you might uh, get to know him. Again, the, the, the key points for today is that God wants you to seek him, the signs. God wants you to rightly read the signs. God himself will teach you to read the signs, and God wants you to know him. He wants you to know the signs. So I'm going to close with this. I'm just pleading from my heart. Look, I'm going to tell you, God wants you to be saved. Amen. God wants you to be saved. Yes. Again, I told you that all of this started for me. Got birthed in me when those, when those babies were singing that blessed, anointed, and true gospel song to know him. It says, my redeemer, sent to a rugged cross to set me free. All right. My savior, yes. bared my sins just to rescue me. My replacement. He took my place so I wouldn't have to die. All right. He's my provider. Yes. All right. And because of him, I enjoy everlasting life. All oh, right. just to know him. Yes. To know him. Yes. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, risen Savior. Yes, he rose from the dead so I could rise again. Yes. An awesome roof, crucified just to call yes. me friend. Yes. All right. Hope of glory. One day I'll get to see his face. Yes. And oh, I'm so grateful. He loved me enough All right. to gladly take my place. All right. He cares for you. He cares for me. And this is true. Like this, the lyric here is so true. He said, I don't know why. And I can't explain it. I can't explain it. I, I do my best. I do my best to share with you. Like, I remember when I first got saved. Now, I had been, I had grown up in church. Attended Wesley Chapel AME Church. I did <clears throat> All, I, I was dotting the I's and, you know, checking off the check boxes. I was going to Sunday school. I was going to church. I was going to vacation Bible school.
and Bible study, but I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't know God. I heard about him. See, look, 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 I'm just keeping it real with you. Like, don't be one of those who for years and years and years hear third hand, right, from somebody else about God the Father, God the Son, and us. I'm telling you, the whole purpose of this message today is that I'm, he wants you, he wants you to know him for yourself. Look, he died on that cross. Here's the truth of the matter. Jesus came and died on the cross for those who would believe him and even for those who don't believe. All right. He still did. He All knew right. that there was going to be, he knew he was going to be rejected. But he still said, Father, I know the situation that the blood of the lambs and, 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 and the doves and all of that stuff, that's not sufficient. But my blood has the power Yes. To not just cover over sin, but to blot it all out. Oh my God. Like, I encourage you to get to know Him. And, and there is no shame. If you don't know it for yourself today, no shame in that. No shame in that. But I want you to know that there is no better day than today. No better day than today yeah. to say, Lord, yeah. I'm hearing your voice. All right. And I know that you are telling me that you are real and that you love me. I haven't always gotten it right, but I want to make it right. I don't want to declare my own righteousness. I want my righteousness to be true. Right. So, Lord, on this day, I yield and I come unto you. All right. Today, will you come? Let us stand. If there is anyone here, on this day, who's willing to be truthful to themselves. Look, you don't, like, don't worry about, in fact, I'm going to ask everybody to do this. Close your eyes. Everybody do me a favor and just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And right now, as I'm speaking, don't focus on my words. But go to that place that's been giving you the most difficult time and face it. If it's too big for you, if it's a giant or two, and you need some help, I encourage you this day to turn to Jesus Christ the son of the living God and he will take care he has the power to take care of your problems but most importantly he's concerned with taking care of you if you're moved and so motivated if there's something stirring on the inside of you why don't you come why don't you come nobody here nobody here has the right or is justified to think any kind of way. If there's anyone here who just is dealing with some hardship, something, some, some struggle in your life, and you just need to touch and agree, why don't you come? Amen. If there's anyone here who's moved, wants to be a member under the guidance, the spiritual leadership, 
of Bishop Patrick O. Ivey. Why don't you come? Amen, amen, amen. Y'all may be seated. Thank you. 